Hi, this is James from Irota, and today we're gonna build ourselves a pair of DIY speakers. Now the project that we're gonna be building in this video are known as C-Note speakers. When I was doing my research for this video, the one name that kept on coming up over and over again were the C-Notes. The C-Notes just hit all the right points. Amazing sound quality for the price, very DIY friendly, a lot of amazing documentation and it's probably the most popular speaker kit in the world. So when you open up the box, you're gonna get a flat pack speaker cabinet kit that has been pre-routed for the speaker drivers and the porthole, which is great because it means that you don't have to invest a lot of money on some specialized tools in order to make your speaker cabinets. And the kit comes with a complete set of drivers for your speaker build. And first up, we have a one inch soft dome neodymium tweeter with the waveguide. Now the waveguide sits inside of the speaker and uh, they routed it out just for this tweeter. So it sits in there really nice and cleanly. And we also get a five inch aluminum cone woofer. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I opened up the box for this guy was how massive the magnet was for this driver. Uh, when you hold it in your hands, it just feels very quality. When I was doing research for the C-Notes, the one comment I got over and over again was that the parts that they picked for this kit were very well specced. And we also get a handful of components in order to construct the crossover for the C-Notes. And I'm gonna build those first. The reason why I like to build my crossover before I build the cabinet uh, on my speaker builds is I wanna know exactly how much room I have to lay out my crossover. Um, so I always like to do a quick mock-up of what the speaker build is going to be, just so I can just make sure mechanically I have enough room in order to work. And I just find it's a lot easier to deal with the electronics first. Um, so the trick that I do on this is I will take the bottom panel of the speaker cabinet and I'll use that as a reference to build out my crossover. And this is a clever way to go about it because then you know exactly how much room you have to work with and make an optimal layout for your crossover. Now the construction method for this crossover is point to point. And what that means is we are just going to solder one leg of a component to another leg of a component. Now I like to use this stuff called blue tack to hold down my components while I do my layout and soldering. Uh, this stuff is great. Uh, you usually see it on walls holding up posters, but it actually holds down components secure enough so you can get your soldering done. Now one of the rules of point to point soldering is don't bend your component legs directly at the edge of your component. You always wanna go out just a couple millimeters just so you can relieve a little bit of stress there. Now it's not necessary to do more than just two twists uh, of the component legs together. You know, any more than that and it's just really unnecessary. Uh, the thing that really makes the connection there is going to be the solder and just making sure that you have a good flow of solder and good solder joints. So the layout that I came up with is identical to the layout that is in the C-Note build manual. The only difference is it's laid out a little bit further apart. And I'll explain why I did that later in this video. But for right now, hit pause on the video, copy my layout, and we will go build a C-Note crossover. Now the necessary tool at this point is to get yourself a decent soldering iron and I am going to be using the Irota Solder Pro 110 Butane Soldering Iron. It's great to use butane just because I'm not really tied to a power source. I can move it in and out of cramped spaces quite easily. It's a great soldering iron, highly recommended for speaker builds. When you get in and solder in your components, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is heat up the legs with your soldering iron and then feed the solder directly on the legs. And what happens is the solder will flow over that and you get really good solder joints that way. So now that my crossover is built, I'll go ahead and lift that up, clean off any of the blue tack residue and I am going to glue that down to a piece of scrap wood. So I'm just gonna use a piece of scrap balsa wood I had lying around. Uh, balsa wood's great, it's super easy to work with. Uh, you can just score it a few times with an X-Acto knife and it just snaps off. So this is really easy to cut the right size that you need. 
So I'm gonna hot glue all my components down. I'm using the Irota TG600 and it's just really easy. You don't need too much glue, just a little bit and just tack it down. Uh, I'm gonna glue each of my components down except for the ceramic resistor. For the resistor, I am going to use epoxy. Uh, it's just the one component that has the potential to get hot enough to maybe weaken a hot glue bond. So now that the crossover is built, I just want to spend a second explaining why the crossover is laid out the way that it is. And it really just comes down to the inductors that are used in the crossover. They have a tendency to interact with each other. So you get crosstalk between the two inductors. So one of the reasons why one of them is lying flat and the other one is lying on its side. And it's so that the magnetic fields between the two inductors do not interact with each other. So now that the crossover is built, let's move on into the cabinet build. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and drill in the holes for my terminal posts. So when I work with MDF, I always like to do pilot holes and just widen it out with a larger drill bit afterwards. Uh, MDF has a real tendency to tear out, so make sure that you are going in a nice and slow. So this next section of the speaker build is probably, in my opinion, the most nerve wracking, and that is the glue up of the cabinets themselves. So the first step in this is you're going to want to make sure that all of the edges are free of dust. So this part of the build is a very messy operation. There's a lot of glue involved. It's important that your workspace is nice and organized. The glue's gonna get on your hands. So make sure you have some paper towels handy and just kind of get everything just set up to go. Now, any type of wood glue is gonna work here, but uh, you know, I recommend that you find something that is easily sandable. Um, you'll end up having to sand down the excess glue that peeks out of all of your joints. It just makes your life easier down the road when you start finishing your cabinet. Now I'm going to use the tape method for clamping down all of my pieces. Uh, if I had wood clamps, I would absolutely be using that. That is definitely the tool for this job, but unfortunately I don't have any clamps. So masking tape it is, and the type of masking tape I'm using is painter's tape, and it has a low adhesive qualities to it. And this is advantageous because uh, MDF will have a tendency to kind of tear if you're using something like duct tape. So I'm just making a grid pattern on the back of the rear panel and I will just carefully flip that guy around. And you know, you wanna be careful that you don't make any twists in the tape. You need everything nice and straight because uh, you really need to keep your cabinet square. So one of the nice things about the C-Note cabinets is they routed out the rear panel. So you have an edge to lay down the rest of the panels against. It's just really important that everything is lined up perfectly. So take your time at this point. We're not adding any glue yet. We're just laying out all of the panels and then I will go ahead and tape on each of the sides once I know that it is perfectly even. And at that point, what we can do is we can unfold the cabinet kind of like a flower and now it's all set and we can lay down our glue so here we're going to put a generous amount of glue on all mating sides of the cabinet mdf has a tendency to suck up quite a bit of glue so make sure that you have enough to account for that and once you start laying up all the sides you should see a good amount of squeeze out and I will just quickly wipe it down with a dry paper towel and you need to move pretty quickly here uh, you don't want the glue to start setting up on you before you have a chance to get uh, your cabinet properly positioned so you need to move fast uh, just be prepared for the mess have some paper towels ready to go so now we're going to go ahead and lay up all of our sides and you'll see a bunch of squeeze out. So again, go ahead and wipe that down and then put in some extra pieces of masking tape just to make sure that things are nice, tight and square. Now, after your glue has cured, it's time to remove all the masking tape and move on to wiring in your crossover. 
So now I'm just gonna temporarily place my crossover in the cabinet and uh, place it as far back as I can. I wanna keep it as far back from the low frequency driver as I can just to keep that rear magnet from affecting my inductors. So I'll just lay the front panel on my cabinet. I'm not gluing it yet, I'm just using it as a reference point so I can get my wire runs correct. And now I just make sure that I have enough wire length in order to be able to properly solder in the terminals to my speakers. You don't want to make your wires so short that it makes this process difficult later on. So now that I have all my wire lengths sorted out, I will go ahead and just add the wires directly to the component legs. This process is really straightforward and uh, I'll just make one turn of the wire around the component legs uh, and it makes a really good secure connection. And just like before uh, with the soldering iron, you're gonna wanna heat up the bare copper wire and feed the solder to that heated copper wire and just take your time and let the solder flow through all of those copper wire strands and get a good connection to those component legs. And here is the wiring diagram. Feel free to hit pause and wire up your crossover. Now I'm gonna use Velcro in order to secure my crossover in the cabinet. It just makes it a little bit more user serviceable down the road. And also at this point of the build, I will install my terminal posts. It just is a lot easier to get uh, a decent solder connection without having my front panel on. Uh, you just get a lot more room to work. So now that I've secured my crossover and soldered it to my speaker posts, I am going to install the front of my cabinet. Now you wanna take your time with this, just like before, you only have one chance to do this correctly. So take your time, make sure that everything is nice and square with the rest of the cabinet, and then I will go through and apply some more of that masking tape just to hold things down. And then after I am absolutely positive that my front of my cabinet is nice and square, I'll place a heavy object on the top of the cabinet just to let that glue cure up. So now that we are done with our cabinet, uh, the last step here is to sand down all of the joints and just watch out, MDF sawdust is not very good for you. Uh, so you just wanna go through and make sure you have a very nice smooth finish. So I'm making a pair of these for my friend as well and luckily he knows how to do veneers. Uh, I'm leaving my pair nice and natural, but um, you know, when I saw the veneer on these, I, I kind of think maybe I made the wrong decision, but I am sticking with it. I'm gonna leave mine natural, but uh, from the rest of this build, I'll be building up his speakers. Okay, so we are at the home stretch and uh, one of the last components we need to do is the port tube. Now the port tube is adjustable and the recommended length is seven inches long. Now you can change that, you can make it ever so slightly shorter if you wanted a little bit of a tighter base response on your cabinets. But once you've decided on your port tube length, you're going to want to glue the inner sleeve with the outer sleeve so it doesn't move around or rattle. So let's situate our port tube so it is nice and even and I'll just tape it down really fast and run a pilot hole to do my screws. Now when I fasten my screws down, I will use just a handheld screwdriver. The reason being that uh, MDF is a pretty soft material and you kind of run the danger of stripping out the hole uh, if you're using a power drill. And this is also the case when we install the drivers. So now all we have to do is solder in the crossover to our speaker terminals. Now on the tweeter, uh, there's no clear markings on which side is positive or negative. Just know that the negative is gonna be the smaller terminal and the positive will be a large terminal. For our woofer, it is a lot easier to figure out which side is positive or negative. The positive side has a red dot right next to it. So after we have soldered in our terminals, we just screw in our drivers and that is it. We have completed our own pair of DIY speakers. So I had an absolute blast making this video. I might actually now have the DIY speaker bug as well. I'm not sure my bank account is going to be very happy with me, but 
it was totally worth it. Okay, so that is it for this episode. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.